Hi, um, it's been a very long time since I've made the last video on my YouTube channel and I have kind of have a reason for that that I think justifies everything I do. <laughs> I mean, not in a bad way, but still. Um, so the thing is that eight months ago I got diagnosed with ADHD so kind of like in this video I wanna talk a bit about that, about my journey, why I didn't realize I have ADHD my whole life and what led me to think about why I might have it and how kind of was the process of being diagnosed here in Germany. If you're new here, if you don't know me, I'm Yara and I'm a freelance illustrator and occasional character designer. Uh, at the moment I live in Germany, Berlin, and originally I'm from Russia, which also adds to my background because being diagnosed there is a whole different story and we'll get to that later. So for now, please stick around, um, get some coffee or something. And this got cold because I got distracted. So for now, I just want to kind of start with general information. Um, I've been diagnosed on October 31, <laughs> officially, uh, last year here. And that's been freaking hilarious because it's been like, it, it was Halloween and everything felt so spooky and I was like, okay, now I finally got my official diagnosis and I can finally kind of breathe. And it was so funny because at the moment I was going to a German school, I was learning German. I took my meds for the first time ever and I'm telling my teacher, it's been so quiet here. And she's like, huh, what do you mean? And we are like, just so you know, in the busiest, uh, loudest area of Berlin. So she's like, huh, what do you mean? Like Halloween here, quiet? And then she got what I mean. And she's like, oh, in your brain. It's like, yeah, exactly. So anyways, um, I wanna start this story with just telling you um, how my life has been before. And I think it relates very, very closely to the fact that I'm an artist and that I draw all the time and I'm like in a creative field and this all just adds up, you know? Uh, so please stick with me. I'll start my story with probably the fact that I have been diagnosed with depression since I'm like 12, uh, which is like crazy because why would a child, a little girl, be diagnosed with depression at the age of 12. Kind of doesn't make any sense and it wasn't adding up. I always felt quite differently from everyone. I always felt like I'm just so sad and there weren't like any particular reason for that. I just didn't feel like I fit in. And in my school, I, I, I just had this feeling that nobody's like me and Everybody is just so different. I felt so lonely and I would say I never had any like real friends until like actually I moved here. <laughs> I don't think that I would ever feel quite good in there because it just didn't feel right for me. Anyways, um, I think some of the facts that were kind of hiding the fact that I might be neurodivergent is that since my very early childhood I was drawing constantly, I was always crafting, making some DIY shit. I was drawing like literally 24 hours 7. Everybody thought maybe it's just she's talented, she's like into it. Yes, I was. I was really into it and that was the only thing that was kind of bringing me some joy, some relief, and that was actually the only thing I could concentrate on because when I tried doing something else, it just, it was a struggle, you know? 
I was always interesting just in certain things, you know. I was into series, I was like into some stupid shit, you know, that teenagers are into and nobody else around seemed to understand me uh, in my hobbies, in whatever I do and at school I was always with this huge ass sketchbook A4, like this thick every single day I was drawing, I was either in my phone or I was drawing and to be honest I was cheating a lot at school because most of the topics there weren't interesting to me and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna die from boredom. I even had a situation when the principal came to me, he kind of looked through my sketchbook, I mean obviously he asked if he can do that, and I was like, yeah sure. He took a look and it was like, you know, some gay stuff, because at the moment I was so into supernatural and like shipping uh, Dean and Castle, so he was like, okay and he pat on my head and, and said like oh you poor head <laughs> that was so embarrassing but at the same time it was so funny and i was like yeah whatever um uh, so kind of nobody was stopping me from drawing nobody was saying anything i would say like most of my class notes like even just regular notebooks they were like oh, with doodles like everywhere all the teachers, I mean some of the teachers were always saying to me like please stop doodling and I was making some careless mistakes in school and actually my mom found some notes from the first grade where the teacher kind of made an evaluation for me because I was changing schools and they wrote like oh she's being so inattentive she's being kind of lazy and you know like it, not like lazy but she, if she could try a bit harder, she would probably do it. And I was like, yeah, that's that's the whole point. Like, I'm smart, yeah, I, I, I know that, like, I can do things, but in order to do it, I really need to be into it. I wasn't trying to get highest points or lowest, so I was kind of like keeping it in the middle so that I don't get into any trouble and nobody would ask something from me but at the same time I always felt like everybody had such a high expectation from me because they knew I'm smart they knew I can do better but I was just not doing it and everybody was like you're just lazy you just need to try harder and I was like no nah, thanks <laughs> at least something good is that most of the time I don't care. It wasn't like affecting me much because I just generally don't care. I was just doing everything in my own way, like all the time. I'm extremely stubborn, I still am, and if I do something this way, it means that this is the way, like there is no other way for me to do it any differently. So that was kind of it. Anyways, everything has changed, I would say when I kind of went into university because at university I had more freedom regarding like visiting classes and doing the assignments and I'd say that out of four years like if we take the like essential time that I was there two years of that I was just sleeping either there at the class or at home and I would even say to you mm -hmm, that's a secret but I've made my diploma like in two weeks so and i still got like good grades just because i you know that was kind of like my superpower to do something good not like best but good in a short amount of time so i was kind of always trying to search for ways to cut the way cut the time cut the effort so i was like i'm lazy this is cool you know there is like meme like around that time there was always this meme like oh i'm not lazy i'm just trying to find like ways faster ways and this is good to be lazy and i was like i'm lazy yeah that's it like i genuinely believed myself that i'm lazy and i've never questioned that and mind you all that all those years at school at university i struggled with depression i struggled with eating disorders like i had anorexia twice and that was always like 
why 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 food gives me so much that was another thing that is kind of like adding up to my story because oftentimes that's a spoiler but ADHD in girls are presented with depression and eating disorders like this is very common story so obviously I had it all since I'm like 12 so well nobody thought that this can be something else and during that time I was visiting some psychiatrists and they were like yeah you are just chronically depressed okay this is anorexia okay this is eating disorder okay this is bulimia and nobody ever questioned why why actually I am like that because they just were like okay life is tough like you're struggling you're lonely you don't feel like you belong and nobody questioned why I even feel that way why exactly I feel that way because now I know the root of it and now I can kind of like look back at my life and realize that everything was adding up and everything was explained by ADHD like I literally can explain every single my decision every single life choice by ADHD so that's wild anyways everything has changed when I was in my 20s um, and after finishing university I moved to another city and I started dating this guy and mind you that was very toxic relationship and he was also an artist which was kind of the worst thing ever <laughs> um, because right until that point I really 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 enjoyed drawing like I could hyperfixate on it for like weeks ages so in my 20s I met this guy he's an artist everything seemed cool and by nature I have this very strong feeling of justice which is also kind of like sometimes very common in ADHD anyways I had this strong feeling of justice and I, I was really helpful I love helping people and I feel my value when I can bring something to people so I was a perfect girl to to kind of be used <laughs> all the time um, and since he wasn't as successful as I am yeah that's that's just a fact so he was kind of like slowly 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 using me more more and more and I think that was the only thing that really killed my mood and that brought me into my biggest episode of depression and at some point in two years after starting this relationship I felt like I hate drawing and I hated it just solely because of him because he made me feel bad for everything I have for all the success I have for all the effort that I put into drawing and mind you I was drawing for years non-stop and he thought that everything comes so easily to me but it's never been like that so that was like very hard on me and the fact that I was always being used and then he tried to correct me he was criticizing me at some point and I felt like everything I do is wrong like wherever I draw is never good enough is never like satisfying anyone enough and I felt like I lost my joy I lost the only thing that was keeping me on board and at this point I've kind of realized that that was it like when I lost this joy in my life I wasn't enjoying it like at all and I hated every single second of drawing and especially at the point it became my profession so I started working and it was very hard for me because I was like what has changed and I couldn't even realize that this all was impacting me so much uh, low self-esteem, depression, toxic relationship, eating disorder and it kind of was like my life was becoming worse and worse until I was like okay I need to change something in this so I went to this psychiatrist and in Russia I would say it's very hard to get ADHD diagnosis as a girl because uh, I mean even back then 
it still wasn't such a thing for girls and they thought like, hmm, it's just little boys and if you're a grown-up woman, although he was asking me all the questions about my concentration, about everything and he thought, um, it's just an episode of depression, it's like another thing that is kind of there and he didn't care, so he gave me antidepressants and only after getting on kind of goodish antidepressants I realized that everything was freaking wrong in my life so I ended that relationship and at a point I started living alone and I realized that I suck at everything I wasn't drawing I wasn't doing anything because I sucked at everything like cleaning groceries doing some adult stuff I realized it's not that I'm not ready for adultish life because I'm always have been so independent but it's more of a I never was doing things in a right way in a society acceptable way it's been hard because I was like what is wrong with me why cannot I just concentrate and do something right why is just not there and mind you at the point i didn't even think that this can be adhd i was just like it's just a bad episode of depression although i started kind of feeling good but my concentration issues my attention issues like all of that it didn't disappear so i still had all of that although i was happier <laughs> i had some good levels of serotonin so i wasn't like sad sad i mean yeah i could have life but still it wasn't like a hundred percent quality life and that made me question like what can be this why i feel that way anyways fast forward to last year i moved to berlin i have now my husband who was very supportive and right before moving to Berlin, I asked a friend of mine who lives here if she has a contact of psychiatrist because before leaving Russia, I took some meds with me and it ended. So I need to renew my prescription because that was the only thing that was kind of keeping me on board. So the fact is that this new psychiatrist of mine, she is specializing in ADHD. So when I went there, she was like, okay, you have depression, okay, I will give you antidepressants, but let's check for a couple of months, because I wasn't taking it for some time and I felt bad again, so she put me back on antidepressants and I've kind of like, okay, let's see. So fast forward for four months, she's like, let's get tested for ADHD. So I made this QB test, which is essentially like a torture <laughs> because this test is uh, tracking your movement, it tracks your attention and um, the reaction, like how fast you react. So this is kind of test when you sit in front of the computer, you have this headband here and it tracks how much you move, you know, uh, you need to click at a certain figures when they appear on the screen but you only need to click it when they reappear that was hard for me because i couldn't even understand the instruction for like four times finally when i understood it i did the test i was waiting like another hour she calls me into the cabinet and she shows me this uh, and i'm looking at this and i'm like kind of looks normal Okay, maybe it is depression. Maybe I'm neurotypical. And then she's like, oh, that's just a comparison group of women your age. And I was like, huh? And then she shows me mine. Uh, and I'm like, okay, okay. And at the bottom it says like, I'm 99% I don't know, frequently losing concentration than the comparison group or uh, stuff like that. So basically it was like 99, 98% more than the comparison group. So basically, and you could see how I moved. I kind of like, I don't even know what I was doing. The test was like for 20 minutes. And at a point you could see that my head went like this. Maybe I, I don't know what I was, what I was doing and I cannot even remember it. And she was like, girl 
let's have an interview. So like in a week or two, I have the huge interview with her. Uh, we go through every single aspect of ADHD and she asked me to bring the evaluation from school, which I talked about earlier. I brought that and also I explained a lot about my childhood, how it's been, like all those little facts. So she asked more also obviously about my adult life, if all the symptoms are present for like past six months, especially considering that I was already on antidepressants and I felt kind of good. So she was like, okay, let me check all of that. And we talked, we talked a lot. I brought example of every single <laughs> symptom when she asked me something. So eventually she said, I have the mixed type of ADHD when you are like both hyperactive and inattentive. So usually like girls, it's inattentive type, but I'm kind of mixed and my hyperactivity is mostly in my body movements. It's not that I'm running around, but I still cannot stay still. And it's more of my thoughts and the way I switch sometimes, the way I react and sometimes I say things without him thinking about it. So she was like, yeah, it's definitely it. So I finally started taking the right medication and I'm so freaking lucky because this medication has been such a relief for me. I feel so freaking great. And I even tried to get off my antidepressants, but I kind of didn't feel good and I had some anger issues. So eventually I got back on antidepressants and stimulants. So now I'm taking both and I feel great. This is literally the first time in my life when I can tell you I feel great. I really feel great. My motivation is back. I, I can be happy finally after so many years and I can concentrate. I can draw for hours again. It's still not as good as before, but I'm getting there. It's been such a burden to me and now finally when I understand what is wrong with me and I wouldn't say wrong what is up with me perhaps it's better to say yay finally I can manage my life in a better way I really I've never been happier in my life with my art with everything and mind you in those like eight months that I'm taking my meds my art has changed so much I've never had so much joy with my art my art style is so different now. It's just so different. I can kind of paste here something from my old stuff and the new. I started experimenting more. I started being more motivated and I finally can just be like, yay, I have so many ideas. I'm so creative and I can handle it. Like I literally can handle it. I can finally just sit down and start doing something. And I think I'm kind of covered everything about my journey now. So maybe in the next video, I want to kind of tell you more in details what exactly is helping me, what exactly I've been doing all those months to get where I am now. I mean, besides maths, but I have a lot of tips kind of for neurodiverging authors, illustrators, creative folks. I think that might be helpful because not many people are speaking so openly about it. And I think mental health is definitely something that we should be talking more about. I really try my best to advocate for that because I understand when I posted on my Instagram that I have ADHD, I've got like 300 comments and even more and there was a lot of messages like private messages saying to me like thank you thank you for sharing your story thank you for being so open about it and thank you for letting us know that we are not alone because in the internet you see like perfect pictures yes everything might be like perfect you can see some success you can see some end result of something but you never know that behind all of that can be a lot of struggles a lot of sad moments and a lot of challenges 
let me know if you want to know something more specific so i think yes definitely next video i'll make some tips maybe i will show you my desk with all the nhd friendly devices that i use and everything that essentially helps me i hope this video was helpful i hope you can think about similar stuff maybe perhaps you will understand that this story is kind of resonates with you and you might start seeking help so please don't take anything without prescription <laughs> that's the most important part and try to be kinder to yourself because even though you might think this is it like i'm just super depressed lazy person that might not be the case you never know what's behind this so please take care of yourself and be kind to yourself be very generous and loving towards yourself and please let me know if you have any questions i love supporting my fellow adhders any neurodivergent folk so i'll see you in the next video bye and before you turn off this video i kind of want to show you my baby we've got a second cat this is Tiri, our first cat and there is nala our second cat now yay meet nala